Welcome back to session five of this course, which guides us in mindfully and compassionately moving through times of transition and challenge by dwelling fully in the present moment. In the last session, we learned about weathering the storms that difficult times bring through belly breathing and walking mindfully. In today's session, we go deeper, looking at how to embrace and take care of the strong emotions that inevitably arise in times of disruption and turmoil. Buddhist psychology offers a model of the mind that divides our consciousness into two layers. The upper layer is mind consciousness, our waking mind, and the lower layer is store consciousness, like the unconscious in Western psychology. It's called store consciousness because it stores the potentialities of our mental states, which are described as seeds sleeping in the depths of our mind. There are many kinds of seeds in our store consciousness, some wholesome, like mindfulness, generosity, and forgiveness, and some unwholesome, like greed, ignorance, and hatred. All of us have all of these many types of seeds. Another way of thinking of these two layers is as a living room, the mind consciousness, and a basement, the store consciousness. When a seed is watered down in our store consciousness or basement, it rises up into mind consciousness or the living room and manifests as an activated mental state, no longer sleeping, but capable of impacting our body, our actions, and changing our physiology. Suddenly we have a guest in the living room, and depending on which guest it is, it can make our living room pleasant and cozy or very unpleasant and tense. So, for example, if the seed of anger is watered, it wakes up from its sleeping state and becomes the mind state or the energy of anger. We feel heat, constriction, and maybe more blood begins to flow to our extremities, preparing us to fight or flee. In this state, if we're not aware, we think, say, and do things that express our irritation and anger, often to our chagrin later. Every minute we spend consuming or expressing anger makes the seed of anger in the basement grow slightly bigger. The next time something happens to trigger our anger, it arises faster from the basement, is more intense, and stays longer in the living room. If we keep allowing the seed of anger to be watered, either by ourselves or by our environment, we get stuck in a toxic loop that makes it grow bigger and bigger every day, and we become trapped in a pattern of constantly getting angered by even small things that didn't used to bother us before. This is detrimental to our body and mind. Our nervous systems were not designed to handle such stress. However, we also have the seed of mindfulness in our store consciousness, down in the basement. We can call up this seed whenever we want. It is always there, always available. One mindful breath, in and out. One step, made in full awareness, is enough to bring up the seed of mindfulness, and it becomes present in our living room as the energy of mindfulness. It has a soothing, refreshing effect on our body and mind, bringing attentiveness, friendliness, and curiosity to our experience. Often, we either suppress our painful emotions like anger or shame by avoiding them, pretending they aren't there, or we vent, letting them run the show and take over our living room. Neither of these approaches helps us to transform these emotions or mind states at their root in store consciousness. Mindfulness is a middle way, a third option that actually leads us to transformation and peace. We can embrace any of our strong emotions like anger, jealousy, sadness, confusion, or fear by calling mindfulness up into the living room as soon as we notice that an unwholesome seed has arisen. We can say to ourselves, breathing in, I know I'm angry. Breathing out, I'm here for my anger. 
We don't deny our anger or try to distract ourselves from it with technology or consuming something. We turn towards it. We face it. It can help to be aware of how it feels in the body, noticing where we feel it and what its physical characteristics are. When we do this, immediately our painful emotion begins to settle down somewhat because we're not pushing it away. There's no war within us. We're being honest with ourselves and returning home to take care of the tense situation in the living room. Once mindfulness recognizes anger, it begins to accept it and give it space. We open to our experience of anger and allow it to be here. We generate compassion for ourselves, recognizing anger is a part of us, so we don't want to reject or judge it. However, accepting anger doesn't mean we give it freedom to cause destruction. Mindfulness is there with it in the living room, so it can do no harm. When we've accepted it, we embrace it, like an older sibling or caretaker might hold a crying baby. We acknowledge that this part of us is suffering, and we move closer, opening our arms to take good care of it. We hold it, rock it, soothe it. We can even speak to this part of ourselves as we practice, saying, My dear anger, I'm here for you, holding you with my mindfulness. I will stay here and take good care of you, not leaving you alone or denying you. You are a part of me, and I'm here to embrace you with my kindness and concern. As we do this, our anger calms down. After a while, it will begin to reveal itself to us, and we'll see below the surface into its depths. We'll begin to understand where it comes from, how, for instance, it may not even be our anger, but maybe the anger of our ancestors or of our community or nation. And when we understand it, we know what to do to heal it, to help it release. In this step, we look deeply into our anger, and it leads us to insight into our deeply held patterns and transformation of our behavior and attitudes. When we practice to care for the energy of anger with mindfulness in this way, the seed of anger gets smaller at the root, and the next time something upsets us, anger is slower to arise, it is less intense, and it passes more quickly. In this way, anger or any strong emotion begins to have an ever weaker hold on us and we become more and more free. Dan Emmons says, what most needs attention is the part of us that we seek to avoid feeling. When we have tended to that, we are changed and the world changes with us. Let's practice this together. Settling into a comfortable position, letting the body open and settle. Feeling the solidity and stability of the earth and letting it hold you. Allow your body to rest on the support of the earth. Connect with the experience of breathing in and out. Enjoying the natural flow of the breath. How it knows just what to do. There's no need to manage it. It takes care of itself. Let 
let your attention sweep through your body now to release places of holding or tension. Checking in, in particular, with the face, softening the jaw, the shoulders, the belly. Any other places that might need your attention? And notice if there are any places in the body that feel good, that are pleasant, or perhaps neutral, where things are just okay. Now bring to mind a slightly difficult or challenging moment that you experienced recently. Not a traumatic one. We want to begin with what's easier. Imagine yourself back in that situation and notice what the emotion or emotions were that arose. Was it anger, worry, fear, sadness, doubt, shame, disappointment, or something else? Whatever it is, notice how it feels. What are its qualities? Invite mindfulness to also come up now and be with your emotion. With mindfulness, you breathe in and out, recognizing the emotion, calling it by name, becoming familiar with it. Stay present with it. Breathe in and out, staying focused on what you experience in your body. Mindfulness, awareness, offers acceptance to this painful emotion. While part of you may want to run away from the pain, mindfulness is here and helping you to give it space, to offer it friendship. Feel yourself opening to accept and befriend this painful emotion. Now with this gentle opening toward your experience, you can embrace this part of you. Open your arms to it and offer love and care like you would hold a crying baby that just needs compassion and care. Release any judgment toward your emotion and offer it tenderness. My dear emotion, I'm here for you, holding you. I will take good care of you. I won't leave you or abandon you. Let yourself express whatever wants to come to this part of yourself that has been rejected so many times. Now it's finally getting the care it needs. Take several deep breaths as you bring an attitude of embracing to this part of yourself and feel your body. And 
Now turn with interest to explore what this emotion has come to teach you. What wisdom does it hold? What has brought it about? Maybe there's some part of it that reveals itself to you that you hadn't seen or understood before. Look deeply into it to see it more clearly. What might this emotion need or want from you right now? Wonderful. Now let yourself settle back and rest, opening to whatever is here in your body, in your awareness after doing this exercise. Allow the insights to integrate. Hello weeds, hello garbage, hello future compost. Thank you for this chance for transformation. I'm so happy that you're here. If I hide you away, you'll just come back bigger anyway. So I'll take care of you, and soon you'll be beautiful flowers. So we don't need to get rid of the weeds in us. In fact, they are essential. With mindfulness, anger can turn into compassion, greed into generosity, and ignorance into wisdom. These difficult emotions in us are like the mud, helping the lotus of awakening to grow. They have a fundamental place, and as we learn to work skillfully with them, they transform into exquisite flowers. In this fifth session, we learned about and practiced embracing strong emotions. We learned the steps of first, recognizing the strong emotion, secondly, accepting it, thirdly, embracing it, fourthly, looking deeply into it, so that fifth, insight and transformation can arise. In the next session, we'll look into the truth of impermanence and how contemplating impermanence can help us live more deeply and intentionally.